Well, hello, and welcome to Let's Play Independence War 2, The Edge of Chaos. This will be my first Let's Play, and for my first Let's Play, I have picked a game from a genre that is probably my favorite in all of computer gamedom, that being uh, the Space Flight Simulator. And I have also picked a game that I haven't played. Um, well, I have played a very short amount of it, through the intro section, uh, I guess the tutorial, um, but that's about it. Uh, I picked it up off of uh, Good Old Games a while ago when they were having a sale, and uh, when I got it, I thought that it would be a good game to do a let's play of, um, and so I stopped playing it, and I haven't really gotten back to it until now. Um, Independence War 2 is an interesting game. Uh, it's one of the few flight simulators ever released to have uh, fully Newtonian physics. Um, unlike most games where your engines need to be uh, burning for you to keep speed, um, this actually acts as though you are actually in space, uh, not affected by gravity or air resistance or whatnot. Anyway, I tried recording the intro video and it crashed. So, I'm going to link you to uh, another YouTube video of the intro, uh, which you should go watch in now. So I'm going to assume that you've gone and watched it. Uh, if you haven't, then uh, you should, because it's uh, really quite good, and from the era when uh, intro videos were, um, well, really quite good. Um, I rather enjoyed it, and it introduces us to our main character, Cal, a fresh-faced young boy. Uh, his father, Felix, who uh, doesn't uh, exist anymore, and a rather delicious villain uh, named Caleb Moss. Um, I think he's a really good villain character. Anyway, without further ado, uh, let's watch the uh, second intro video and get into the game, shall we? Loading screen. Shouldn't take too long. Although it is taking quite a while, I guess it's because I've got fraps going. Anyway, here we go. I know you're hurting right now, kid, but you gotta stay sharp. You can't stay here. When you're in this command section, you're in no position to do anything. I know a place where you might be able to get a new ship. See the flashing in the top right of the screen? That's what's known as the orb. This is used to locate nearby contacts in 3D space around you. In the bottom right of the screen, there is your contact list, showing details of nearby vessels and stations or any waypoints. We'll come back to this later. In the top left, you can see the multi-function display. This gives you more details about your current target and other important information. Below this is the current selected weapon display. This shows the type of weapon you're using and the amount of ammo remaining. While flying around, you'll probably find the HUD menu an invaluable aid when performing flight functions. Once you bring it up and navigate through it, I'll tell you about each of the menu sections individually. Okay, now we'll look at the contact list a bit more. Everything within sensor range is displayed on this. That's it. 
Now select my waypoint from the list and fly towards it. Use the direction indicators on the HUD for guidance on its direction. Alright, so of course, um, in uh, natural fashion, I had forgotten uh, another main character, that being Jefferson Clay, the uh, AI construct of a famous military commander. He will be our mentor and our guide through this uh, world. Anyhow, let's uh, fly towards this waypoint. And of course on the way... I'm not sure what that was. Um, but on the way, um, let's explore some of the Newtonian physics. If we turn the flight assist off, like that, we can fly around and... Uh, as you would expect in space, we continue flying in the same direction. And when we're doing that, we can engage our thrusters to move uh, really quite quickly. Um, of course, we're expeding the port speed. Looks like you got the hang of that. Okay, let's move on. When you're around stations, you'll be unable to use your LDS drive because of the LDS inhibit fields generated by them. You can tell if you're in an LDS inhibit field by a green exclamation in a circle on the HUD. When using autopilots, all ships are limited by the speed limits imposed by the station. Autopilots are incredibly useful for navigating through space. The first autopilot is the approach. You'll use this one a lot. Try selecting a ship near you by getting it in the reticle and pressing select target. Then engage approach to move towards it. And of course, um what I was going to mention was the speed limit around stations, uh, which we were exceeding. Anyway, let's just do what he says. As you can see, once the approach is engaged, your ship will turn to point at your target and begin to move towards it. The next autopilot is Formate, handy for following other ships. Again, select a ship near you and engage Formate. Alright, let's use the Formate Autopilot. With Formate engaged, your ship will obtain an orientation relative to your target and He's try to maintain an constant asteroid. distance from it. Flying in formation may be <laughs> Okay, let's disengage the Autopilot and move on. Alright. Disengage Good. Autopilot. The final Autopilot is the Dark Autopilot. You'll find this useful when you need to talk to people at stations or pick up cargo you want to carry around. Try it out now by docking to that abandoned hulk on your ship's contact list. Abandoned hulk. Um, abandoned hulk. Okay. Dark autopilot. Let's go. I quite like the space. It feels like space. It doesn't have uh, delineations and things between sectors. Everywhere um, is simply in the same um, space. Um, that's quite nice. I rather enjoy it about this game. Um, we're going really slowly, so let's uh, ignore the speed limits a little bit, shall we? Uh, can't do that while I'm in autopilot. Okay, I'll just talk for a while then. Um, but yeah, you'll see once we start uh, engaging our LDS, which is our uh, warp drive, uh, exactly how um, nice space feels, but it's quite nice. I don't like it visually very much. Very much. It's very um, colorful and bright. Uh, I tend to prefer uh, black space, but it works well within the game itself, so I'm not going to complain terribly much. Nice little animation of us docking with this abandoned hulk. Right. Looks like you got the hang of that. Let's undock and I'll continue. Alright, undock. Let me get another Next, nice let's animation. try using the LDS drive on your ship to travel to a destination using the star map. Bring up the star map now. The star map? It's actually one thing I like about this, is uh, pretty much every normal command you need in the game is mapped to the um, hat on your joystick. So we can go to the star map. This is like the that. star map. From here you can select locations throughout any of the systems. 
Let's start by selecting the planet Griffon. It's around half as weak alpha. Alright, let's find Griffon. Um, that's not Griffon. Griffon, there you are. Good. Um, select. You got select. it, kid. That's the one. Now let's fly towards it. Try out your autopilot. It'll put you into LDS once we get out of this LDSI field. 